Hello and welcome to this video, where I explain how hitboxes and collisions work on Roblox and clear out misconceptions about hitboxes sucking on games. So let's get to it. If you have played a Roblox melee game, you know that the hitboxes on those games usually seem to not work properly, since usually from your perspective, you end up getting hit from far away even when the weapon is not touching you, or in the case of FPS games, you get shot even after you took cover. But did you know it's actually not the hitbox's fault? Before explaining the phenomenon, let's explain what a hitbox is. Hitbox A hitbox is basically just a collider separated from the visual model you see. This collider can collide against raycasts, other colliders, etc. The reason games use a separate model from the visual one for detecting collisions is to save performance since calculating physics and hit scan on the model's actual geometry can get very resource intensive. Now let's look at the ways we can make hitboxes in Roblox Studio and detect collisions. Touched events. Touched event is basically a signal that we put on a specific model in Roblox Studio which fires whenever the model collides against another collider. Even though this method sounds simple and perfect for making a hitbox, for a sword for example, touched events are not accurate and use a lot of performance and not to mention their security vulnerabilities. Spatial Queries Spatial queries are functions inside Roblox Studio that allows us to check what colliders are intersecting certain geometry. These are the three main functions. Get Parts in Bound Box this function tells us all the colliders whose bounding boxes intersect the bounding box we specify to the function. Get parts bound in radius. This function tells us all the colliders whose bounding boxes intersect the radius specified. Get parts in part. This function is the most accurate out of all the three since it will tell us all the colliders whose geometry intersects with the colliders geometry we specified to the function. While this function is accurate, it costs more resources to compute, so developers rarely use this. These functions only do a single check, allowing us to do some sort of scan similar to hit scan in GAUS. However, we can also run these functions every tick in order to be able to constantly check if collisions are occurring. Raycasting Raycasts are a calculation that consists of drawing a line on a 3D space with a specified length, starting point, and angle. Then, after drawing the line, it will check if any collider's geometry intersected it. They are very fast, so developers usually use them for games. Raycasts allow us to do hitscan for first-person shooter games, and also, they can be used for making melees by constantly casting multiple rays from a weapon's model into their last position. Magnitude Magnitude just tells us the distance between two collider centers. This behavior can be used to make a circular-like hitbox that detects other collider centers that get close, and we can also do this every tick for a more dynamic-like approach. The difference between magnitude and get parts bounds in radius is that magnitude only checks for collider centers while get parts bounds in radius detects all the collider's bounding boxes who intersect with the radius. All of the methods mentioned are the most commonly used for creating hitboxes, and while using custom calculations, just how Chikinoid does it for its physics engine, is very possible, most devs don't use custom calculation. Now, the reason why hitboxes don't work as intended usually is because of latency. Latency is the time it takes for a machine to send a message via network to another machine and then have it set back. We measure latency in milliseconds, which we call ping. But how does latency affect the hitbox? Well, most multiplayer games use a client-to-server structure. The way it works is like this. The player's machine where the game is being ran is called a client, while the machine that hosts the game is called the server. All clients connect to a server. Whenever a client wants to move, they will move on their machine's world state physics simulation, and then send the inputs to the server, so the server can then move the copy of their character from the server's world state. Then, the server will send his current world state to all other clients, which contains model positions, other players positions, which other clients can use to update their world state, and that way we can see other players move on our screens. But now, let's say we're in a fight and we're chasing someone and we have 100ms, and we press the hit button. 
or input to hit will take 50 ms to get to the server and the world state we got from the server is already 50 milliseconds late. This means by the time the server casts the hit from its world state, the opponent is not even there anymore. So instead, most Roblox games result to casting the hit registration from the attacker's client. This way, every time you press the hit button, the hit rig is casted based on your world state and that way it feels responsive. However, here's where the hitbox breaking part happens. So, as you might assume, since the hit rec is casted on the attacker's client, that means if our opponent presses the hit button and we have 100 ms, and he also has 100 ms, in our screen we will see ourselves 50 milliseconds ahead from the server, and he sees us 50 milliseconds late from the server world state. Additionally, he is 50 milliseconds ahead from the server from his perspective. That means from our perspective, it will look like he hit us from really far away. And this is the real reason why hitboxes don't properly work on almost any game on Roblox. Fortunately, there is a better way to solve the latency problem other than clients that are hitboxes, but unfortunately since clients that are hitboxes are very easy to implement, developers usually end up using them. Guys, this was my first video ever on this format, let me know if you guys liked it or not. And if you guys would like me to talk about the other ways to solve latency in games, please leave a comment below. Anyways, this is CCTV Studios heading out.